Hello, we're here from Business Foundations and we want to spend the next 15 minutes or so talking to you about funding your startup venture. Business Foundations is all about working with startups, innovators and entrepreneurs who've got a great new idea that they want to take to market. My name's Pia Turchinov. And my name's Phil Kemp. And we just want to run through some of the basics you should think about when you want to take your idea to market. So the first question most entrepreneurs ask themselves is how much money do they really need to start their new business? To work out how much money you need to start your business, you need to know what to spend it on. There are going to be issues like uh, the cost of your equipment, the cost of your staff, any marketing money that you need to spend, and how much money you'll need to expand the business to achieve its full potential. Once you know how much money you need and what you'll be spending the money on, there's lots of different options to look at as to where you can find money to fund your startup. Initially, the easiest way is to try and fund it yourself. Self-funding or go to friends, family, connections that may be willing to invest in your particular project. If not, you can also look at angel investing or perhaps venture capital. We'll touch on these points a little bit later. There's also government grants and government programs around Australia that can help you build your startup from the ground. You just need to keep an eye out on what's available at any given time. There are new platforms around now, such as the Startup Stock Exchange, which also provides another opportunity for funding. We have the Australian Small Scale Offerings Board that is available for Australian companies. And also you might have heard about new platforms such as crowdfunding. Many different choices, lots of different options. Self-funding your venture really is a matter of looking at your bank account, seeing what your resources are, and checking how much you can actually afford to put into your startup. 90% of ventures fund themselves this way in the first few months. You then should be looking at the next three to six months of sales as a way to fund your project to the next level. Larger sums of financing are normally used to fund growth and expansion stages rather than the initial startup phase. An exciting opportunity for entrepreneurs in Western Australia has been the recent creation of the WA Angel Investment Group. Now, angel investors are exactly as they sound um, by their name. They're people that have money and will come with their money into your business and provide their skills and expertise to help you start your venture. It's not a passive investment for them, it is an active investment for an angel. So one of the tricks you need to consider for your project is how that angel investor will add value to your business and if you and the angel investor uh, relate to one another or have a good understanding of each other's uh, needs and what and what the business is trying to achieve. Now venture capital is often talked about in the startup area as the pathway to fund your business. Now I give a word of caution around that only a very small number of businesses actually get funded by venture capitalists in Australia or overseas in places like Silicon Valley However, you wouldn't necessarily know that from the amount of Google traffic that directs you to venture, uh, venture capital financing. So if you're thinking of looking to a venture capitalist for funding, then there are a few things you need to think about. Some of the questions a venture capitalist will ask you about your business is how much money do you need to fund the start and growth of that business? The venture capitalist in particular is looking for high rates of return because there is high risk in businesses being funded in this way. So they're going to be asking questions in particular about who your customers are, how many customers do you have, and what sort of financial returns the business is likely to generate. Now remember that pitching to investors to raise some money is just like selling your product. You need to think about what it is that your customers are looking for. And in this case, the customer is the venture capitalist or the investor. You need to package your business in a way that makes it really attractive and highlights the difference and the novelty of your idea compared to what's already out to market. You need to convince them why they should be investing in your project as opposed to any of the others that are around town. In many instances, people get quite protective about their new business and their new startup and shy away from giving away equity shares in their venture. Now remember, a small slice of a large pie is usually worth a lot more than a large slice of a pie that's really not worth that much. Be prepared for lots of knockbacks, 
lots of pitching and many, many doors that you have to knock on before you actually find your funding. Now remember, when you're pitching to an investor for funding, it's just like sales. You are marketing your idea to the individual or to the consortium to try and convince them why it is they should be putting money into your startup as opposed to any of the other deals around town. You need to package your business and your investment opportunity in a really attractive way to make it stand out. It is sales, it is marketing. You're selling your idea, but you're also selling yourself and the team that stands behind you to develop that new product or process. Now, when it comes to finding equity, often people get quite nervous about giving away shares of their business to an outside investor. But remember, in the long term, it's important to keep an eye on what the business will be worth when it succeeds. If you own a small share of a large, successful business, it'll give you a good return. On the other hand, if you try and keep 100% of that particular business, but you don't manage to get it off the ground, it won't be worth much to you. Be prepared to get advice. There's lots of support out there, many opportunities, and a lot of experts that can give you guidance as to how to go about this. Be prepared for a lot of knockbacks. This is not a fast process and finding the right avenue of investment for your project can take time. You will need to give your pitch many times before many different groups of individuals before you find that you actually get someone who wants to fund yours. But remember to use each knockback or setback as an opportunity to perfect your pitch and tweak your sales pitch to that investor. There's also government assistance available to startups. In Australia, keep an eye out for your state government programs as well as federal programs that can help you not only get funding to get your startup off the ground, but also access advice and mentoring on the process of building a new business. You should also take a look at Commercialisation Australia, which is a federally government funded program and available to give you support and assistance to get your business started. There are also avenues through Oz Industry and other government grants that will help you get the right guidance and the right support. In Australia, there's also ASOB, a very similar service to the SSX that allows startups to put forward their proposals to raise funding anywhere between 250 to $5 million. Other ways of funding your project are through crowdfunding. You may have heard about programs such as Kickstarter, Pollinizer, a lot of these originate from overseas platforms but are now becoming more popular in Australia. There are multiple platforms available and you'll find most of these online. Essentially, it's a great way to generate both excitement, marketing and revenue through sourcing funding from often dozens if not thousands of individuals who are willing to put a small slice of money towards your project. A key aspect of this way of raising funds is to remember that you need to find your customers. Don't expect them to find you. It is a busy space. There are a lot of projects out there and you need to be prepared to put together a really nice marketing campaign to set yourself apart from the other projects that are on these platforms. You will need to set yourself time limits and have some good parameters around what it is that you're offering your customers. Are they actually getting a product at the end of the project and you're simply raising the funds to make the manufacturing process a reality? Or are they giving you money in order to bring the project to the next stage of R&D? Most importantly, remember this whole process can take time. You usually can't do it on your own and it can be a very long journey. So make sure that you're prepared to find the right team to put the project together. You will not know all aspects of the project but you can find the right people. Find the mentors and advisors that will work with you that can help you develop your pitch, your marketing strategy, your intellectual property rights. Be prepared to access industry networks. There's a lot of opportunities, a lot of support out there. You just need to put the time into it to get it right. So finding finance will be one of the hardest things you do with your startup. Creating the idea is relatively straightforward, but the money's always the tricky bit. Remember that not over 90% of businesses are actually funded from the sales and activities of the business. Only a very small proportion are funded by external people or venture capitalists. Remember, there's no right or wrong way to approach this. 
It's for you to decide which is the right avenue to seek your funding, get the right advice and make a decision as to what suits your individual circumstances the best. Most of all, remember, you are starting a business. It should be a fun process.